All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna build in our user form level three series. So what this is gonna be, it's gonna be a CRUD application. So create, read, update, delete. So basically what we'll be doing, we'll be creating lines, updating lines, deleting lines, and finally just reading lines from the spreadsheet. So to show you what a final application is gonna look like, we're gonna have this menu here. It's called custom menu. I'm gonna open it and click on open form. It's going to load this form, which has a search, which is basically using this data in a background. So if I wanna find somebody, let's say I want to find Paul right here. I go here and I search Paul and I can search by the first name or the last name or both. So for example, I can do something like that and that's gonna basically give us this dynamic result as we're searching, we get updates. And if I want to remove Paul from our list, I can just click delete. I'm gonna get this dialog to confirm I want to delete this, I click confirm and we should see how Paul gets removed from the background back there, see, it's gone. So now let's say I want to also change somebody. So I'm gonna go here and find somebody we can actually see in the background. So let's look at Lawrence Brown here. So I'm gonna go here and type, there is Lawrence Brown. So I'm gonna click edit. It basically loads that person's information. And if we wanna change it, we can just go here and type something else. Click save and see how it updates in the background in a spreadsheet. We also get the confirmation here. So we can also add a customer. If we wanna add a new customer to this list, we just go here, add a person, click add customer. And now if I go check, we should have that person here and it's gonna automatically assign a new ID for this person as we do this. And we also have this nice counter when we search. See, it tells us how many results we have after the search, something like that. So we can edit, delete, add, basically what you would expect from an application like this. So to be able to understand what I'm doing in this video, you need to have some good understanding of HTML selectors. You need to have good understanding of event listeners. If you don't understand these, I recommend you watch my HTML JavaScript series. I'm gonna link to that series in the bottom of this video. If you want, you can watch that. You also need to understand array methods in JavaScript, which again, I'm gonna link to series covering all of those in the bottom of this video too. A lot of this is also gonna be based on what I've covered in my previous user form series. So there's user form level one, level two, and this is gonna be the third one, which is level three. So I would recommend you watch those level one, level two, two, to make this easier. Now in level two, I also did a lot of other things that you could implement here that I didn't implement. So for example, I didn't do any validation in this forms, so it's not gonna be checking if I'm entering any information or whether it's correct information or not. If you want to add those type of functionalities to this app, refer to my level two series and you can see how all of that can be done. So to build all of this, we're gonna be using Google Sheets. We'll be using Bootstrap as our framework. Basically, that's getbootstrap.com and basically just writing our own JavaScript code. All right, so let's get started. So in this video, we're gonna primarily take care of the problem of loading different views in our user form or web app. You can apply the same concept for both cases. Now let's start by doing some initial setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and go tools, script editor. So by the way, I have this data. This is the data I'm gonna use for this. It's pretty simple. It's basically first, last names and phone numbers and we have customer IDs which you need to have some unique column of customer ID. So you can just go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now in this particular data set, I have about C6,000 lines of data. Now, if you're following this and you're trying to replicate this, you don't really need a database of this size. You can just do five, six lines 
and that should be enough to work with this. I'm just doing this larger data set to see how the app reacts to this and just to see if there are any speed issues with this. So again, after tools script editor, we have our script editor, we're gonna name this project as usual. You can call it anything you want. I'm gonna go ahead and create a script file. I'm gonna name this one load form. Again, you can call it anything you like. And I'm gonna create another HTML file here. I guess I'll just call it main, that's good. So for now, I'm not going to worry about this part. I just want to make sure we can add a menu here on top that we can click on and load the user form. So let's start with that. I'm going to go to my load form file and let's create a function here. This is what I'm going to call this. I'm going to first create an HTML service. And we're creating a file from template and the template is this HTML, so it's called main. Now we're just going to evaluate that. So we get some HTML back. Then I'd like to add this to our user interface. And we could add it, for example, as a sidebar using this show sidebar but I think I'm gonna need more space than a sidebar, so I'll go with this dialog. So it's asking me for the user interface, so that's gonna be this HTML. And it's gonna ask me for a title, this is just text. We'll just say edit customer data. So this is it for that. Now let's also create a function to add a menu here so we can actually trigger this and open this. Now here we need to get our UI again. Just gonna copy paste that. Then we need to add a new menu to this. So we'll take that UI and create a menu. I'm gonna call this custom menu. That's just the text for the menu. You can do whatever you want. Then I'm gonna take that menu and add an item to it. And I'm just gonna call this open form. And what I want this to do when we click on this, I want it to run this load main form function to basically just load our user form. Now we need to make sure we add this menu to our UI and that should take care of it. So now this create menu should create a menu here. Now we wanna make sure this function runs so that menu is created. And we're gonna do it on open. Now I'm not explaining all the steps as much as I usually do because I did cover all of these in previous videos. So if you don't understand exactly what I'm doing in these lines, go back and watch previous levels of user form series, so it will make a lot more sense. So here we're simply gonna run this function, create menu. Now out of these three functions that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually make the ones that are not supposed to be public, private, like this create menu. We don't need to call that function from anything external than our scripts. So I'm gonna add this underscore and that will make this function private, which means when we call that, we're gonna call it here. Now on open is a special method. We cannot make it private. So that's gonna stay the way it is. And load main form, that one needs to stay public because we want to call this function not from our scripts here, but from here when we open the menu and click on it. So I'm gonna save this. Now if I reload my spreadsheet, it takes a little bit, but see, we have this custom menu. Now, if I open that, there is open form. If I click on this, it's gonna ask me to do all the permission stuff. And now let's try it again. And you can see how this thing loads now. There's nothing in it, it's empty, but we have a form. Now, I want this to be a little bigger because I'm gonna need more space. 
than this. So let's go resize this. So let's open the script editor. So to change the size of this, let's go to our load form. We can do it by taking this HTML that was rendered here and setting some dimensions on that by using set width and set height. Save that. Now I should be able to reload this without having to refresh the entire spreadsheet. So if I just go here and do this, more permissions. So now we have more space to work in here. All right, let's continue. Let's go back to that main HTML and put some HTML in there. I'm gonna be using Bootstrap for this. So that's where I go to getbootstrap.com and click on get started. Scroll down to find the starter template. Copy all this code here and just paste it in here. I'm not gonna need this title. I'm gonna remove that. And below this entire thing right here, I'm gonna add a script. And it's important to have that script in the bottom. So I'll go right here and do a little bit of container around this entire thing. So let's go find a container. Inside of this container, I'm gonna do a div and give it an ID app. And then above that ID app, I'm gonna add a little bit of navigation. All right, so for navigation, we'll go here and find our navigation examples. I'm gonna go under components, navs. You can also do this other one. I'm just gonna scroll down until I find something I'm gonna like good enough for this. This is actually pretty good. I'm just gonna copy that. Go back to this and paste this right here in this container above the app. I don't want these to be links, so I'm gonna change all these A's to divs. And I'm also gonna remove this disabled. I'm gonna remove this hyperlink references. Just some labels, nothing special here. Save this, go back and take a look. So we have this now. I wanna change this to have a little hand when you roll over this instead of this cursor. So that is this nav link class. Let's style that. And we'll just make the cursor pointer, which means now I get this hand. All right, so we got a little navigation happening here. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna load different views here depending on which one we click on. Let's give these some IDs. So I wanna just partially load whatever view needs to load inside of this app div. So let's create some views. So I'm gonna do one for search now, one for add customer. So just HTML files for those. Now these are not gonna be full HTMLs. These are just gonna be parts that are gonna be loading inside of this main view inside of this div app. So for now, let's just keep it simple and put some H1s. Now let's see how we're gonna be able to do this. So we need some way that we can just go here, click on search and load that search view in here and add customer, load the add customer view here just below. So let's create a function for that. I'm gonna keep these functions separate from this load form. I'm gonna close this as a matter of fact and this one too. Create a new script. 
some name for that script. Now again, we're gonna need to use HTML service. So let's go ahead and activate that. And we're gonna evaluate it to get back HTML. But this time I don't actually want HTML as HTML service. I want that HTML to be just text. So I'm gonna do that by doing this get content method on this. Now, since this is gonna be happening on different views and it's gonna be pretty much the same thing over and over again, one for search, one for add customer, I'm just going to create one function that I'm gonna be able to reuse. So I'm just gonna go here and say partial and call this load partial HTML and then just pass that partial here and return this content, just like that. So this way we should be able to reuse this function. So I'm gonna create a few functions here. And we should be able to just use this. And instead of partial, we'll just pass the HTML we need to be returned, which for well, actually let's do this for search for now. And if I want this to work for add customers too, it's pretty much gonna be the same thing. And this needs to match to the file name for your HTML you have here. That's it. This doesn't have to be a public function because we're not gonna be needing this outside of this. So I'm gonna make it private. These are gonna be public because we're gonna have to get these results back in our user form so we can use those. All right, so now that I have these partial HTML strings, we need to add those to our form. So to do this, I'm gonna go to my main HTML and simply go to the script and add a function and an event handler. And we're gonna call that function when we click on that button here that has this ID search link. So we're gonna do that by assigning an event listener. So when we click on this button, and um, by button we mean this navigation link in this case, search link, we're gonna just trigger this function load search view. And what that function is going to do, it's gonna call that backend server side function, which is what we called load search view. So we're gonna do that by doing google.script.run and call that function. Now what this function is going to do, it's going to return that partial HTML. Now we need to get that return and work with that. So we're gonna add a success handler here. And that's gonna accept a callback function right here. So I'm gonna put the function right inside of this without creating a separate function. And that's gonna accept that HTML string that's gonna come back from here. So now we should be able to take that HTML string and put it inside of this div with an ID app. I'm just gonna call that HTML. So we're gonna set the inner HTML to whatever HTML we get back. So let's save this and test this. Does this work? So right now, if I click on a search, that loads that content from search page. Now we need this to also work for add customer. And that code is gonna be very similar. So we basically have to repeat this entire thing again. Now for that reason, instead of repeating the whole thing all over again, let's create a function that can be reused to load all these different views. So we're gonna call that function something like load view. And parameters that are gonna be passed to that function, if you look here, the part that's gonna change this part is this load search view. We're gonna have to pass which function is it that we're gonna have to run from the back end 
to bring back the information we need. So that means we need to pass a function. I'm actually just gonna do this as options and we'll pass that as an object to this. So just to give you an idea how I want this to work once this function works, I want this to be like this. So I can do load view and then pass an object and say func for that function should be this load search view and that should basically do what's done in here. So that means we're gonna have this property inside of this options that we should be able to use. And mainly we're gonna do this. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that. But instead of this, because this is a function, I'm gonna assign this as a property to this. So instead of doing this dot notation, I'm gonna go with this and as a property to this, I'm gonna assign that function that's gonna come from this. So options dot func. And notice this is not a function that's being executed. It's just gonna sit there and wait. So we want to be able to execute this and we should be able to do that by simply adding parentheses like this to execute that. So let's see now if I can just now take this line and put that instead of all of this and have it do the same thing. So I'm gonna save this, go back and test. So that loads the search view just fine. Good. Now as another option I want to pass here, I want to be able to also sometimes do this and say, where do I want these results to be placed? So for now it's going to app, but I want to be able to also provide different containers if I want to and say load it inside of this other thing and give it a different ID or something like that. As a matter of fact, we can also just instead of ID do a selector so it can be any type of selector, but I think I'm gonna do IDs, IDs are specific. But I don't want to pass the app ID if it's just app, so I want this to be default, but only in case we pass something else, I want to use that. For that, I'm gonna go here and check if this ID is defined. So I'm gonna set a variable here, I'm gonna say var ID, and the way I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna check if this ID is defined inside of this options. So I'm gonna say if the type of this equals to undefined. So that would just mean we didn't pass this if that happens. If it's undefined, we'll just set it to app. Otherwise, we'll just set it to whatever it is. So I'm gonna just do this. So if nothing is passed, we'll just use app as ID. Otherwise, we'll use whatever is passed to this. So now we'll just take that ID and plug it in here. And this should now work the same way. Now I should be able to just not pass this. And if I run it, it should work exactly the same way because the default should be app. Cool. Okay, so that's good. Now let's also do something as a callback. So what may happen as we load this, after it loads, we may need to run some functions. So similar to when the page loads, but there's no page anymore, so we cannot do the DOM loaded anymore. We have to figure out when the view loads, then let's do this other thing. So I want to have some sort of callback as an option here, which means we can define like callback and say that should be this other function that needs to run when this happens. So again, we have to check if that's defined. So I'll just call it CB for callback. And I'll say if that options.callback is undefined, so if there's no callback function, let's go ahead and assign an empty callback to this, like this. Otherwise, we're gonna use the actual function that was assigned. Now we wanna run this callback right after the view loads, which is gonna happen right here. We're gonna put that HTML in our page, and right after that, we're gonna run that callback, whatever function we pass to it. To make sure this works, let's test this. So let's say I want to view this search view, and then I wanna go find this h1, let's give it an ID, h1. I wanna find this and change this text from search to something else to see if that whole thing works. So we'll do this 
call back other func, which we'll now have to create. And what that should do, go find that h1 element and text content will be something else now. We'll say new search. So I'm gonna go back here, reopen this, click on search and see how it says new search. So the page loads and then we go and find that element and replace it, good. Now finally, the last thing I'm gonna do with this load view, I want to also have an option to pass some parameters to this callback function. Basically to this function, I want to be able to pass some arguments from this initial function so that I can use it in here. That we can set as something like params and we'll send some parameters to it as an object, I guess. Uh, so for example, let's send the text we wanna change to instead of just having hard-coded text. So I'm gonna set a parameter, I'm gonna call this one maybe title. And again, these are not mandatory. So I'm gonna have to check if that was defined or not, in this case, params. So I'm gonna say if that is undefined, then we want to basically run the callback here with no parameters passed to it. So I don't really need this line here. That means I'm just gonna do this directly in the bottom there. So right in here, instead of just blindly running the callback like this, let's do the check and say, if that's undefined, question mark, then we're gonna do this callback without any parameters. Otherwise, we'll do the callback and send those parameters to it. I think that should complete this. Let's just test this and make sure this works. So to test this, now we're gonna get this object here. Maybe we'll just call it params too. And then we'll take that and grab the title out of it. And that should fill this up. So if this whole thing works, this should now replace that H1 with this text. Another search. Cool. All right, so we got our function. So this was the hardest part here is to create this function that we can execute. Right now, I'm not trying to pass any parameters or anything. So it's gonna be pretty simple. We're simply just gonna say this, but we're gonna need those functionalities later. So if I also want to load, let's say that add customer view, then it's gonna be this, we're gonna take this and create another callback. And we're gonna basically do this again. And I have to go in the back end and see what the function was called. Just for having this in the correct order, let's put this on top. Now let's test this. So if I go back and open this, that should do this. If I click on search, that opens that. If I click on add customer, that didn't work. So let's see what the error message says. No HTML file named add customers was found. Okay. What did I call it? Add customer, okay. So this should be in our back end. This file name, I called it add customer, not customers. Let's try this again. Search, load search, add customer, loads customer. Good. So now we have an option for us to load view with a bunch of other things we can do with it that we're gonna be using later. Now let's also just quickly build our search view the way it needs to look like. So the search view, I want this to have an input box here. So let's go under forms and find an input, something like this. So I'm just gonna copy this. And instead of doing this, maybe we'll keep that H1 right there on top. I don't need the ID. Now for this, I don't need the label. 
I don't need this small text. I don't want this to be type email. This I don't care about. Maybe we'll add a placeholder. I do need some sort of ID for this. So that will be the actual search input box where people are gonna be typing to search for things. Now let's also put some results below that search input box. I'll use a table for that. I'll use this one that has this hover effect. I like that. So I'm gonna copy that whole thing, go back here and paste. Now for me, I'm gonna need what in my search results? It's gonna be ID first to last and telephone number. Well, telephone number I'm probably not even gonna use in search results. So first, last and customer ID. So there's this fourth column here. Oh, this is nice. It's called exactly with the same names. Now the last column here that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove all these other rows just to keep one for now. We will need to repeat this row for every other search result. And then I want some sort of edit button and delete button as two other columns. So this column we already have. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna call this. I'm just gonna leave this empty for now. Let's just create those columns on top here. And then I'm gonna create those columns down here too. So this one should have a delete button. I'll use this as a design, copy this, go back, paste that in here. This should say delete. Maybe the first one will be added actually. Let's do that. And then I'm gonna do another one, which is gonna be our delete. Something like this. Let's save this and see what this looks like. Looks good enough for me. Now we're gonna also add a little customers, this add customers view. Let's do a form for that. So go to this add customer, add a customer, I guess. We'll go back and find again a form I'll just copy this, change it up a little bit. So we don't need this small text. So when we're adding a new customer, we need to add first name, last name, and telephone number. So we need three input boxes. So this should be a good model to go by. So I'm just gonna delete these other two or whatever else we have there and copy and paste two more of these. The button, I'm just gonna replace this submit. And finally this, I'm not gonna do a form, I'm just gonna convert this to a div. Let's just give this a class of some sort. I think that should do it. Let's just go take a look. So search loads this. If I click add customer, that's gonna load our form. Good. And for now under home, let's put edit form. So I'm gonna add another HTML. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And when we're editing, we are going to have again First name, last name, phone number. Only this button is gonna say save and we're gonna have a button to cancel changes. Added customer form as a class for this div that holds this whole thing in. Again, we have first name, last name, phone number. Now when we're editing, we also have this customer IDs. So I'm gonna add that field on top.
All right, so that's that. So we have customer ID, all of this. I'm gonna save that. Now we need to make sure we have a backend function that loads this, this added customer. Again, match the file name. And then we can now call this function on our front end. So if we go to this one, we can create another link in here, which is gonna be for this home link for now. We're not gonna keep it in there, but we just wanna make sure we can see what this looks like. That's the function that's gonna be called when we click on this home link, that's gonna go here. Now, this one is gonna be that function I just made. So now we should have this view as well. So if I open this, it is not gonna load when the page loads, but if I click on search, it's gonna load. If I click on add customer, it's gonna load. If I click on home, that should load this added customer view. We're not gonna keep it under home anyways, so that's not a concern. And that's pretty much all the setup we need. So initially, we're able to do this view loader, which was the main thing we wanted to do in here. And starting from the next video, we'll go into searching our results and populating this results table. But for this one, that should be it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.